Welcome everyone, in this video we will be making a play and pause animation similar to the one on Netflix. We will be using Two Dimensions Flare tool to achieve this effect. Please note that I am still new to this tool and I am still figuring things out. Okay, so we are at the homepage for Two Dimensions. The first thing that we need to do is create a new file. So we are going to select your files and then say new flare file. This takes us to the editor with the file properties. We are going to say public and we are going to say allow fork. This would make the file available to be used by other people, meaning they can fork their own project and make alterations and also download or export the binary. Hit save. In the design tab, we are going to select artboard. And we will need to change the width and the height. We are going to set the width and the height to 500 and center the artboard. And while the artboard is selected, we are going to add a triangular shape. This will be the shape of our icon. While holding shift, we will drag until this is 500 pixels wide. Not exactly, so we will select it and set the width and the height to be 500. And we will align the position to be 250 in the X and the Y to make sure that it is centered. The artboard is set at 0 and 0. Then we will rotate this triangle. And here we have our play button or the skeleton for our play button. We won't be animating this because it has fixed points. So what we need to do is we need to create the play button shape using the pen tool to create individual points. And from that animate those individual anchor points. So while artboard is selected we are going to go and choose pen. And now we will select some points for our path along the skeleton. We will alter these individual points now to make them more precise. For now, I'm just defining the basic structure. And then we will click it closed. And then for this new shape, we are going to set the position to be 0 and 0. And then clicking edit vertices, we are going to select the topmost corner, which should be at position 0, 0. This one, we want 250 for the X, which is the center point. And for the Y, we need to set it to 125 to have it follow the triangular line. This one will need to be 250 for the X and 375 for the Y. And the last one would need to be 0 in the X and 500 in the Y. Okay, that is our first one. We will rename this shape to be left. Okay, make sure you select artboard and then we will select the pen tool again. And then we will define the rightmost shape in the same way. So the next one will also need four points, but we only have three corners. So we are going to add another point in the center and then select the other corners and close the triangle. Okay, so we would need to again set the shape to be at position 0, 0 to make it easier to calculate the animation positions. So we will need to move these individual points again. So we're going to click edit vertices and then drag these points along. Okay, I'm going to speed up the next section. All we're doing now is just adding the points to be exactly where they should be. Okay, here we would need to do some calculation to determine the exact center between the two connecting points. Okay, we're going to rename this shape to be called right, while the other one that we made is called left. Okay, so now we have our play shape in the form of individual points using the pen tool. So next we are going to go to animate. Zoom this out a little bit. And we are going to define an animation called play to pause. So this will go from the play state to the pause state. Okay. 
Okay, then we will select the path. And the first thing that we will need to do is we will need to keyframe the current position. So it is adding these keys to the time frame. So we are going to move the time frame up a little bit, a couple of milliseconds. And then we are going to select edit vertices. So I'm going to speed run through this. What we are doing now is we are just moving the individual shapes to the desired position to form the pause logo as well. So one by one, we are changing the keyframe items to put them into different locations for that given timestamp. Okay, so now you can see it is animating that shape. Okay, so for the left one, we will do exactly the same. Make sure left is selected. Keyframe these again to make sure the positions are set at the start. We can jump to different keyframes by clicking left and right at this setting. Next, we're going to select the right path and say edit vertices again. And now we will go through the same steps to make the left shape animate. Okay, so now we have this play to pause animation. And as you can see, as we drag the slider, it steps through the animation keyframes. To achieve the same effect for pause to play, we are going to add another animation and call this pause to play. And now we're going to go through the exact same process, only inverted. So this time for the first keyframe, we will start at the pause shape. And then for the next keyframe, we will move to the play state. So let's skip ahead. Okay, so now we have our two animations. We have pause to play. And we have play to pause. We can set the animation a little faster by dragging the keyframe items. Now what we can do, we can remove our original triangle, the one we used as a reference. To remove it, you'd need to go into design and then select and delete. Okay, and then for this left shape, we are going to define a solid color. We are going to fill it to be completely white. And then for the right one, we are going to do the same. At the moment, if you look closely, it looks like there's a little bit of a gap. So if you zoom out, you can see there's like this little bit of a line. Let's see how this looks when we animate. It actually looks fine going from pause to play and play to pause, but there is this little bit of a gap. So what we are going to do, we are going to select the stroke and we are going to set the thickness to three. So now you can see it is dotting over a little bit. It's slightly bigger. So for the right object, we are going to do the same. Okay, and that looks perfect. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to change the name of our file, we are going to call this play pause animation. Then we are finished, we are going to click export and then set the engine to flutter and the format to binary, and then click export. And then we have our binary that we can include in Flutter. In the next part of the video, I will show you how you can get the play pause effect using this binary in Flutter. Okay, I will quickly show you an example how we can incorporate the play pause button. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create an asset folder. Call it assets. And then we need to drag in our binary. Then in the pubsec.yaml, we will need to reference that asset file. This is a bit of a lengthy name. I'm going to just rename this to say play pause. Okay. And then we would need to also add the relevant dependency. Let's save and see. Okay. It's working. It's fine. Okay. Then as a quick test, we are going to render a text field. And then let's hit run. 
Okay, so our application is loaded. Now we will include the Flare Actor widget. For this, we will need to reference the assets file. And then we need to import this library. There are an additional couple of properties we can set. We can set the alignment and we will set the alignment to be center. The fit, we will say box fit contain, and then we can hit save. And there you can see we have our play button. It is, might be hard to see because it's, it's set to white. So let's set the color to red. There you can see we have our play button. So let's wrap this Flare Active widget in a container. And here we will define a new size. We can say 50 for both the width and the height. Perfect. And the next thing that we'd need to do is we'd need to define the animation. So we are going to define a new variable. We will call this play to pause. And then we will give the animation property. Hit save. And that does the animation from the play to the pause state. Okay, next, what we want to do is we'd like to wrap this in a gesture detector and we will define the on tap. And then in the on tap method, we are going to define an inline if statement to change the animation name for the two different animation states. I made a mistake. I should have instead created a temp variable and then later in set state, we will set the animation name equal to the temp name. Hit save. And now if we hit the button, it alters between these different states. And that is that. Um, I'm not entirely happy with how the animation looks, but yeah, this was just an example. Um, as I mentioned, you can use the flare editor to customize the animation that I made. And that is that for this video. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And yeah, in the future, we will be looking more at Flare and what we can do with it. Until next time, cheers.